Have you ever heard of a guy named Lawrence of Arabia? Probably have. I mean, he's iconic. He's remembered in film, book, it's legendary. And in 1917, a British intelligence officer during World War I named T.E. Lawrence was dispatched to the Middle East and he began a journey where ultimately he infiltrated into the area now known as Iraq and Syria and he established relationships with very, very influential people in the Badu tribal nation and he ultimately mobilized them into a fighting force, right, that supported the overall allied coalition against the, uh, the enemy forces in World War I. He used unconventional warfare, as we call it in special forces. But I've studied Lawrence for a long time. I used a lot of his principles and a lot of his insights and lessons learned as I wrote the Village Stability Methodology and also as I wrote the book Game Changers to highlight a lot of the best practices and lessons and cr frankly failures that we learned doing very similar work with the tribal folks in Afghanistan. And T.E. Lawrence, I believe, represents a skill set. His life, you know, he was a controversial figure, first of all, okay? And I get it. There's lots of folks who uh, view him as controversial, maybe he wasn't as successful as some thought, maybe his methods were you know, too rogue. I'm not really interested in getting into that. What I am interested in, and I think will serve you, is the skill set that he used to, to build rapport, to establish relationships, and ultimately loyalty with very disparate, uh, distrustful, um, difficult to work with folks and then mobilize them, galvanize them into a fighting force. Now, what he did simplistically was he created a vision. He told a story about the city of Aqaba and, and, and this was a, a fortress on the sea that belonged to the Ottomans, the Ottoman Turks, and if captured, could, would, would clearly pave the way for the overthrow of that empire. And he told this story in such a way that it won the hearts of the Badu tribesmen that he was advising. And remember, these tribesmen, they couldn't even sit in the same tent together without pulling their knives on each other. But he found a way to connect them around a central thing. And that central thing was the crown jewel of Aqaba. And now Aqaba was thought to be an impregnable fortress that just could not be penetrated by a tribal force at all. But because Lawrence was a former geologist who had been in and out of Aqaba many times and he knew that the vulnerability for Aqaba was not the sea, there were all these guns facing the sea, but rather from the desert. Because the people that held that city felt like the desert was too foreboding for anyone to make that long trek and then be in fighting shape to take Aqaba. So they assumed risk to their rear. Well, who do you think could possibly make it through that desert, Wes? Nomads. And that was the story that T.E. Lawrence began to tell. And he told it again and again and again and through each connection. And, and that narrative started to take hold. And it started to be a master narrative that other people started to tell and they started to tell that story to themselves. And they started to create uh, an element of self-belief. And ultimately, they bought into that vision and not without challenges, they made their way across the desert, this Badu nation, tribal nation, and this confederation took the city of Aqaba. And it, it created conditions for the allied powers to focus their efforts in other places. And this was a huge economy of force it, 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 it relieved pressure on the allies by mobilizing these indigenous people to do what would have taken thousands of allied soldiers to do and probably lost all kinds of rapport in the process. Now, I tell you all that story 
not because like I want you to fall in love with you know the T.E. Lawrence approach, which you know I, I hope you do, but but in that I want to show you the return on investment that can be achieved when even one person applies the Lorenzian skill set to a disparate group of people who don't even want to follow. And it's that Lorenzian skill set that we use so heavily in rooftop leadership. I learned it as a Green Beret. I teach it as a former Green Beret to future Green Berets and other operators, but I also teach it to business leaders. And I'm telling you, I've done a ton of work in, 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 in the social science world to look at trust, distraction, disengagement today. You know, the enemy that we face as business leaders is that people are so disengaged and distracted and there are rising levels of distrust. And that's not doom and gloom, that's just a reality. And as I look around the landscape, I see business leader after business leader defaulting to the coercive approach because I said so, hands on hips, this is the way it's gonna be. And in doing that, if Lawrence had tried that, they would have slit his throat. And in your world, the same thing will happen to you in a proverbial way. Your people will literally take your knees out from you. They will become social insurgents. If your only tool is a hammer, then every problem looks like a nail. And that's how we got in this place, in, the, in this problem in the first place. So, so my, my ask of you is to stop the over-reliance on coercion. Stop over-relying on your rank or your position, right? and start learning how to move people to take action even when they don't want to follow using the Lorenzian skill set. Now there's three major areas that require work on that. One is what I call narrative competence or learn how to tell stories. Learn how to tell Aqaba stories like Lawrence did. Learn how to mobilize your people around Aqaba, right? The crown jewel. It's a powerful, powerful approach. Narrative competence. Humans are story animals. I don't care what your discipline, how tough you think you are, humans are meaning-seeking, emotional, social creatures who are story animals. We make sense of the world through narrative, and the leaders who understand story will own the world, according to Steve Jobs. And it's absolutely true. Learn to be a great master storyteller. Two, learn to actively listen. The best storytellers on the planet are the ones who can listen. Harken back to your grandparents or folks from that generation, the greatest generation, the World War II generation. How good were they at listening? They were pretty good. They would ask a question that was thoughtful and open-ended and then they would listen and then they would repurpose that back into a story to the listener. That is a true skill. Some people have a little bit of instinct on that, but trust me, it's a muscle. It's a learned skill. Natural storytelling, natural listening only gets you so far in this trust depleted age. Working on active listening is a skill that must be developed for leaders. And then finally, learn to be fully present when you're in an engagement, whether it's a key leader engagement with a tribal elder or whether you're sitting down with your teenager to ask how school went, are you present? Are you in the moment? Are you on your breath? Does your body language reflect someone who really wants to listen? Are you hearing what's being said or, Wes, are you thinking about what you're going to say when it's your turn to talk? Hmm. Learn to be present in the conversation. And there's a whole host of other Lorenzian skills that we teach at Rooftop Leadership, but those three should keep you busy for a while. A place that you can learn those is right there on our vlogs on RooftopLeadership.com. Um, and again, I think the reason I'm telling you guys this is remember, we're social creatures and the leaders throughout history who people have followed, bought from and invested from are the ones that make the best connections. And the Lorenzian skill set will help you do that. The vlogs on rooftopleadership.com can help you do it. And of course, our Rooftop Leadership Live that we've got coming up October 4th through 6th, a powerful two day event to give you an, a competitive edge that no one else has on the Lorenzian skill set. Go find Lawrence in your life and business. I'll see you on the rooftop.